Yes, last time I checked was this morning and uh, it was 15 students officially enrolled and uh, so with the way we set up the course so far <coughs> we have like uh, so this is our course I'll, I'll, I'll upload this on our triple E we have like bi-weekly homework assignments maybe three all, all over the the quarter because we will have, we'll need to leave some room for the midterm and final portion. So you can say each homework is about 15%. The midterm is kind of one of the homeworks, but a bigger grade. Um, and we'll have final project. The issue is that the final project, there will be presentations, project presentations, and we'll have um, vote for the best presentation on the most the best project award uh, for which the student will get an A plus irrespective of his or her grade during the course. But in order to do that uh, we will need we, we cannot afford more than like maximum twelve students enrolled officially. I'm not talking about uh, people who are taking it for you know audit or just sitting there. But officially I don't think that this framework will afford more than 12 students at most. So uh, hopefully after today's lecture, I'm sure that some people will drop the class. <laughs> that's, that's an option. If we're back to 12, that would be great. If not, we will have to uh, have some of the folks here take a final instead of the projects, which I'm sure will urge some people to drop. <laughs> So uh, this would be the, uh, the option. So uh, anyway, this is not, I know that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm nice in the sense that I give good grades, but this is not the course in which you like to just take for a good grade, because you will get the good grade, but you will do a lot of work, or not a lot of work, it will be that hard, okay? I mean, I promise this is not an easy course. So uh, if, if you if you are not specialized in fluid mechanics or flying dynamics, then this is not the right course for you. So if you if you are not really interested in the topic, please don't take it just you know to get an A, because not everybody will get an A, and it will be damn hard for you. So uh, I don't think it will meet your satisfaction. It's not like 241. If you took 241 with me, I mean, it might be that course, but this is not 241, this is harder than 241, okay? So uh, we need three people to drop, <laughs> finally and explicitly. Okay, having told that, let's, let's go ahead and see what this course is about in order to help you take a decision, whether to stay or not. So it's about unstereo dynamics, and I'll be more explicit uh, towards the lecture, but let's me, let me start with this these cool, cool videos. So uh, this is the flutter phenomenon, if you can see. You, you see back there? Everybody sees this? I'm not going to turn on the, the volume, but uh, anyway, hopefully you, you have seen what, what's happening. And, okay, no. oh, yeah. <laughs> The, the, the flutter phenomenon at certain speed that the, the airplane wing goes into a into a limit cycle oscillation, continuous pitch, twist, you mean, and bending, bending and twisting, okay? just like this. And of course, at the at high frequency, in which you cannot assume that the flow is steady, it's not a steady flow, of course. So. Uh, this course will help you solve the flutter problem. Uh, any rapid maneuvers like the Cobra maneuver. So this one was just the maneuvers that they call super maneuvers. This is the Cobra chain Cobra maneuver. And you can see the airplane changes angle of attack between 0 to 120 degrees angle of attack and comes back only about 6 seconds, 8 seconds. 
this is the maneuver right there, 120, from 0 to 120 degrees angle of attack, and comes back all in about 6, 8 seconds. It's, it's indeed a, an aggressive maneuver. You cannot assume that the flow is steady in this kind of maneuver. Uh, what else? You can see that the, the future of airplanes will, will make a lot, will have to do a lot with unsteady aerodynamics. So, uh, this is the Helios airplane, that's a Helios, it's a huge airplane, the, the, the span is about 60 meters, 200 feet, okay, so it's huge, and you can imagine that if you have this huge span, it would be highly flexible for sure, uh, and this airplane has damaged before, because, of course, because of the, uh, there was a coupling between the structural dynamics, so if you have if you have an airplane and you have some rust, so your structure will just vibrate a little bit and then damp out. That's it. It might not affect the airplane flight mechanics. Why? Because this guy oscillates at its natural frequency. Can you guess this frequency of the wind oscillation? Is too high or too small? Mm -hmm. Too high. And the flight dynamics of the body is, is much smaller. But when this guy is too flexy, very, very flexible, then it oscillates with slower frequency, so it kind of excites the body modes. So if they are coupled, something interesting will happen. So this is what exactly happened with the NASA Helios, and, and it crashed, and they, they didn't recover from, from that crash anymore. Uh, I mean, one of the, you know, like I'm describing here, the, the, the next generation airplanes, this is very flexible airplanes, and this is the Festo bird, flapping fly like a bird. We're trying to develop the insect scale of that. Or you, can, you can Google the air environment hummingbird. So these kind of applications, they invoke studying and understanding unsteady aerodynamics. This is what I'm just trying to say here. That the course will help you compute the aerodynamic loads for these applications. This is the bottom of it. Okay, so now let's just abandon these videos and go more serious. Okay. So what the course is about, let's see. Steady aerodynamics, I guess. We all have seen this kind of a picture before. An airfoil, some free stream, some angle of attack, right? Some lift force due to that. How many of you did not see this picture before? Because this will be immediately one of the criteria to not to continue with this course, of course. Okay. So what we're gonna do in this course is just now studying what happened if these guys are time varying. If my airfoil is experiencing a time variation in the you know the flight speed, the angle of attack, the airfoil motion in general. Now it's an unsteady airfoil motion, and as such, the generated lift is also time varying. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Is this just introduce this blend part here, the time variation, which unfortunately 
induces a lot. It's not it's not a simple extension. Okay. So this is what 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 we will do in this course. More explicitly, who will benefit from this course? So uh, if you are flight dynamicist, you like to play with airplanes and flight, and you want an equation to compute the lift coefficient due to a time varying angle of attack. Anybody in this room should know that CL is simply equals 2 pi alpha, right, on a flat plate. It's just 2 pi alpha. But if alpha is time varying, I need a simple formula to compute the lift. So how to compute the unsteady lift? It's not 2 pi times the angle of attack as a function of time. It's not anymore. How to compute the unsteady lift? The unsteady aerodynamic loads in general, okay? For a flight dynamics analysis, how to assess the effect of unsteadiness on stability, whether it's flight mechanic stability, whether it's flutter instability. The wing is stable at all speeds and at some speed it becomes unstable and goes into limit cycle oscillation. So uh, how to determine the effect of unsteadiness on this kind of stability? Like I said, whether it's just the regular stability of the flight mechanics that we study in 175, the undergraduate flight dynamics course, or it's something that we did not study before, like the flutter phenomenon. So, uh, and how to compute unsteady aerodynamic loads in general. If you are, because remember, we can always, always go and solve Navier-Stokes equations. But if you are a flight dynamicist, you will never do that. No matter how our computational capability become so advanced, you will never do that. Flight dynamics people will never solve Navier-Stokes equation to determine the stability of a flying vehicle. It will never happen until I, I, I mean, maybe after my, my time in my lifetime, it might happen. Nowadays, it will never happen, okay? So you need an efficient model. You need something like 2 pi alpha kind of thing in order to use and do your analysis that we learn in, in dynamics and control classes. So this is what we are interested in, is to, to develop or to at least to know if there are any aerodynamic models, efficient aerodynamic models, that, like the 2 pi alpha kind of thing, but for the unsteady case, okay? On the other hand, if you are pure theoretical fluid dynamics person, and you want to learn how to develop such a model, develop efficient and stress efficient so much, efficient physics based unsteady aerodynamic models. Okay? There are some in literature that we're going to learn, but with unconventional configurations of airplanes and highly unsteady maneuvers, we will need extensions of these models that are already exist. How to develop these extensions from a theoretical foundation? This is exactly what we're going to learn in this course. Actually, our focus will be here more than there, but I mean, both the course will serve both interests. Develop efficient models, unsteady aerodynamics. Okay? So, like I said, this is our picture. We're going to work with it over and over again during the entire course, introduce unsteadiness in the conditions, and compute the corresponding unsteady load. Any questions so far? If you have any questions, just come up with it, please. Any question? Any question? Did you decide that they're going to stay or not? <laughs> anyway, okay. So, uh, what is unsteady aerodynamics? When we say unsteady aerodynamics, unsteady aerodynamics, what do you mean by unsteady aerodynamics? We're going to have, hopefully, today we'll have three answers. Of Three different perspectives of 
the answer to this question. So first, descriptively, so uh, just in a, in a couple of sentences, what is unsteady organics? So like we said, we, we all agree that the lift coefficient for a small angle of attack on a flat plate is simply 2 pi alpha. And this formula is, is, is then accurate. For a flat plate, small angle of attack, high minus number, it's indeed correct. Okay. okay, so if I have my flat plate at some angle of attack, here is alpha as a function of time, and here is the corresponding lift as a function of time. So uh, my angle of attack is zero for some time, and then I give it a step change in the angle of attack. Here is say five degrees. So you're flying, and as a fighter pilot, just pulls the stick. Instantaneous change in the angle of attack. Assume five degrees. Or the airplane is flying, and an instantaneous gust hits it. That increases the angle of attack sharply five degrees. Okay, that's fine. So uh, what will happen to the lift? So in this range, if it's a flat plate, zero angle of attack means zero lift. Then the angle of attack changes from zero to five degrees. From our steady analysis, we know that the lift will change from zero to something corresponding to the 5 degrees, it's 2 pi times 5 degrees, 5 pi 180, which is simply 0.55. But in reality, the lift cannot build up instantaneously. So this is your input, this is your output, you cannot command an instantaneous output like this. The lift will take some time to build up. So we'll go from 0 to this value by some dynamics. This is our unsteady lift. Okay. The first one is the one that we call steady lift, or sometimes we call it quasi steady lift. Okay. Any question about that? Your lift over the airfoil, the force, the lift force, will need some time to build up. It, it cannot jump in instantaneously because you change the conditions instantaneously. It will take some time. No matter how small it is, it's, it's not zero. Okay? You may opt to neglect it at the end of the day, that's fine, but it's not zero. Okay? Any question about that? So this is our goal, is to know how the lift builds up from this value zero to that value corresponding to the new condition. And in fact, it has to do with how the lift generates an airfoil. In your baby undergraduate course, you will learn how the lift generates on an airfoil. This picture, whatever you got it, it's not complete. Because in order to understand it completely, you 